non-secular, which has since been scrubbed. who may be in this room. We believe you are hiding in plain sight. For more than two years, you never thought we would shift gears to a different investigative strategy, but we have. We likely have interviewed you or someone close to you we know that this is about power to you. And you want to know what we know. And one day, you will. A question to you. What will those closest to you think of when they find out that you brutally murdered two little girls, two children, only a coward would do such a thing. We are confident that you have told someone what you have done. Or at the very least, they know because of how different you are since the murders. We try so hard to understand how a person could do something like this to two, child, to two children. I recently watched a movie called The Shack. And there's also a book that talks so well about evil, about death, and about eternity to the murderer. I believe you have just a little bit of a conscience left. And I can assure you that how you left them in that woods is not, it's not what they're experiencing today.
Rangers. Uh, like everything about it is so messed up. I truly believe there was a gag order immediately uh, for all individuals that that was mm-hmm. had anything to do with the case at all. You know, when I start speaking out and and people start realizing that I'm telling the truth and what I seen when I went looking for these girls, you know, it, it's going to start opening people's eyes, which in turn is going to make those responsible for these girls' murders yep. a, a type of hatred towards me. You know, I, I'm I'm speaking words that could possibly get them convicted. You know what I mean? Rather the killer or killers, rather there's one or two or three or four, I, don't, I couldn't tell you, but rather or not they are linked directly with the law enforcement i couldn't tell you that either well, what I, my I've, I've told you what my thoughts are my thoughts are they are linked directly to law enforcement i i feel like they were running a drug ring for the law enforcement agency there in delphi indiana uh-huh. and i feel like the girls just stumbled upon that and in doing so that you know whoever the killer or killers is that is why they did what they did, and and they did what they did, and and the law enforcement agencies, FBI, state, county, I feel like they've covered it up because they don't want this guy to roll over on them for what he's been doing for them. And he said, you know, I need your help. I need need the girls. They're missing. They they went for a walk this morning and haven't been back. They were supposed to be picked up at such and such time. Um. I can't remember for sure, but I think Brad was supposed to pick him up, or not Brad, Derek. One of the guys over there of the German family was supposed to pick the girls up from the trail at like noon or something, and they didn't show. And so I think it was like four, something like that, four o'clock in the afternoon when I received a call from my buddy Joe, um, wanting me to go out and help see if we can't locate the girls. Um. Joe actually uh, came and picked me up from my mother and father's home. Uh, I rode with him to Delphi area because we was just trying to see what was going on, where everybody was. Well, it wasn't an official search, was it? No, not at that time yet. Not at that time, no. We we didn't find anything going on downtown. Uh, there wasn't a lot of vehicles at the, the sheriff's yeah, department. And, yeah. and then we come back up. To the track line right there there's a first there was like a little pull off to access the river or trail or something and so this van pulls up behind us and that was channel 18 news we we found out a few moments later here's here's the things that can't leave my mind i came in from a county road and i walked the tracks so that's one of the first things that that stays on my mind is there wasn't in my opinion, any type of access to or from from that direction. Mm-hmm. At that point, we're pushing on and aliens and dinosaurs waiting in that tree house, but the spaceship never came. So tell me now, what have we got? I start seeing deer antlers and skulls of, I believe, was a rabbit in in the tree. They were decapitated, just the the face of the skulls and the antler, you know what I mean? Yeah. And they were just set, like, you know how a tree will fork, so they weren't even, like, hanging on a broken branch so that they'd stay put. They were just resting in the forks of trees, you know what I mean? Just, like, placed in there. Yeah, and, and it was almost like it, you know, it had to almost be recently placed in there because, like I said, they weren't, it wasn't like a, a, a limb coming through the eye socket of this deer skull or this rabbit skull, you know, it, it was just resting there. So when the weather and winds would come through, you would think that stuff would fall out of them trees as they sway around, um, which leads me to believe that they was recently done. Uh, and then right right close to the bottom of that hill where I noticed the tracks, that's where the pile of bones were. And then I'm going to tell you, there was all types of bones there. We, you know, keep pushing on. Uh, no signs of anything. No trails, no drag marks that I noticed. Um, 
I'm not no type of private investigator, detective, or anything like that, but I tell you, I do pay very close attention. As I'm going on, we get up, you know, we walk up the tracks on through, and we get up to the trestle area. Uh, it was like pitch dark at that point, and there was several people standing in the area. Um, and so I'm going up, and I ask one of the guys, because I go – during the daylight, you know, I didn't have a flashlight in my hand, you know, I, I didn't. <laughs> and so I go, go to cross these trussels and I believe it was a fire guy, fireman. I'm not positive on that. Like I said, it was dark. I was tired. My mind was already in one of the worst places possible for these little, I already had a gut feeling this wasn't going to be a good turnout. Um, and they, they tried to tell me I cannot pass. made last week by defense attorneys for the man accused in the Delphi double murders. Carroll County Prosecutor Nicholas McClelland is responding to that 136 page memo filed by Richard Allen's defense team last week. In the memo, they accused the case's chief investigator, Sheriff Tony Liggett, of fabricating statements of several key witnesses in order to get a search warrant for Allen's home. Today, McClelland calling the entire memo, quote, colorful, dramatic, and highly unprofessional, defending Sheriff Liggett, saying, quote, he did not intentionally or recklessly omit evidence or lie about evidence to get the warrant, going on to say the accusations are not supported by any evidence. However, defense attorney John Tompkins says the lawyers wouldn't make those accusations lightly. No lawyer would sign his name making these accusations unless they felt they were well documented and they could back them up when they get in court and present them to the judge. The prosecutor also addressed the defense's claims that there was not probable cause to obtain the search warrant. McClellan reminding the court that Allen admitted he owned the same caliber of gun that was linked to an unspent casing found at the crime scene, had clothing similar to the suspected killer, and was in the vicinity of the Monon High Bridge the day the girls were killed. He says all that together was sufficient to get the search warrant warrant and an arrest warrant. McClellan also briefly responded to the defense's theory that Abby and Libby were murdered by a white nationalist cult known as Odinus. Allen's lawyers claim Odinus rituals and symbols were present at the scene of the crime. McClellan responding, saying that very little of the defense's motion is about legal issues, writing, quote, the remaining 90% of the memorandum outlines its fanciful defense for social media to devour. facility, Richard Allen has been monitored, intimidated, and mentally abused by correctional officers who are also members of the Odinite cult. These Westville corrections officers boldly wore patches on their Department of Corrections uniforms that proclaimed, in Odin we trust, along with another patch displaying symbols of Odinism, the interlocking triangles. Oh, affidavit 
from each of these correctional officers. We begin with number one. Um, I have been an acting supervisor in APOD, where the defendant is housed since late February, early March 2023, that I do not practice Odinism and that Norse paganism heathenry is my practicing religion. I do wear patches on my uniform that identify me as someone who practices Norse paganism heathenry. The patches are real. Correctional officer number two, I do not practice Odinism. I do wear patches on my uniform that can be, but are not associated with Odinism. It's hocus pocus. I, I honestly didn't, I, I'd never heard of it. Um, and the more I got into it, um, that's, that's a real thing. It is a real thing and it's scary. Well, I believe they sacrificed a girl and killed another one. Um, they, some of the uh, people that live in Delphi uh, were ver very brazen about uh, their Odinistic beliefs on their Facebook pages and other social media accounts, including the sergeant who was in charge of keeping Mr. Allen safe in Westville. That Mr. Jones uh, had a tattooed under his right eye. Um, from the best we can tell, it uh, looks a lot like Odin's spear. And he had several tattoos on his forearms, uh, including the interlocking triangles that are on his Facebook post.